What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So we're gonna be talking about ammunition today. So we're gonna be talking about ammunition choices. And I just wanted to cover a couple things because I see a lot of stuff and I hear a lot of comments. So I wanted to cover a couple things. So let's get into it. Now, uh, if you guys have followed my channel for a while, you know I'm not a big follower of uh, tactical channel or communities or tactical uh, gun channels, YouTubers and stuff like tactical gun tubers. I'm not a big fan of tactical gun tubers. Matter of fact, I you know I may follow some gun tubers. I don't actually watch their stuff. You know, occasionally I'll pull into their stuff to take a look at it. But I really don't follow a lot of the whole of the defensive shooting community and stuff like that when it comes to uh, you know the defense. The only people I honestly uh, follow, Clint Smith. Reed Hendricks, I follow Clint Smith, I follow Reed Hendricks, and Paul Harrell. Um, those are pretty much the only guys I honestly follow when it comes to the actual defensive trainers and stuff like that. Well, Paul Harrell is not is a trainer. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he's a trainer. I know he's a dentist. <laughs> Good guy, though. But he does some of the best, uh, best videos when it comes to comparing calibers and ammunition and gun types and stuff like that. So I'm a big fan of his stuff. I also follow people like Jarhead6. He's a good dude. All right, he's a good dude. So I follow people like that. But when it comes to the actual defensive shooting, um, when it comes to defensive channels and stuff like that, I do not follow most most defensive channels. The Yeagers, the um, uh, what Haley, uh, whatever it is, I don't follow them because pretty much every single thing that I see nowadays on an Instagram and stuff like that is I see all these competition guys, like not competition, I see all these defensive schools like on Instagram and they're teaching their guys how to do defense. But you're looking at it and they're teach like Tehran Tactical and stuff like that. They're not teaching defense, okay? They're they're de they're teaching competition. All right, they're teaching competition shooting. There's a di big difference between competition shooting, which is you know as fast as possible, every this every split second counts, get in there, boom boom, kick the door and hit everything along the way. And real world defensive situations, real Real world defense is slow and smooth, smooth, fast, slowly and methodically work your way through the buildings, clear the rooms, pie the corners, take your time, make sure the threat is, is taken care of, make sure the building is secure. That is the actual tactical way to clear a building. But on these same channels out there, they talk about specific ammunition choices that you need to have. You have to have this type of ammunition. You're stupid if you choose this. You're an idiot if you carry this ammunition and stuff like that. The second you hear someone say, you're an idiot if you carry this, you should immediately just you know not watch the video. If you want to, feel free, but you just probably shouldn't watch the video because more than likely that entire video is about biased, is their personal bias that they throw into the video. If you choose a high point carry, I damn high point. Yeah, you know, it's, it's 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 a gun that works for you is a gun that works. That's all that matters. But if they t but if you hear someone say you're an idiot if you choose this, no, that that's not the type of uh, you know instructor that you want to be talking to or talking to. But anyway, one thing I want to cover is ammunition choice, mainly ammunition choice, because I've heard a lot of these guys they'll say um, you're an idiot if you choose ball. For defense you are an idiot if you choose ball for fence now i've talked about it too ball is not the best case or it's not the best for defense you need one jacket or hollow point they have a uh, they don't penetrate as much and they do in increase the actual devastation of the round that actually is shot now especially if you have lower calibers you seriously need jacketed hollow point 380s nine millimeters you need jacket hollow point you have to eat 40 good idea yet yeah, probably should use jacket hollow point 376 seven six probably should use jacket hollow point right you, you need jacket at hollow point for most defensive situations when you find yourself in that. However, ball ammunition will work. It will. It, the ball ammunition will work. And in the same sentences, a lot of these people will tell you that ball ammunition or hard ball ammunition wounds and jacket at hollow point kills. So you're an idiot if you carry ball. That is BS, okay? Ball gets the job done. All right, ball does get the job done. You don't believe me? Talk to the military. That's what the military uses. Does it take a little bit longer to get the job done? Yeah, it usually takes a little bit longer to get the job done when it comes to pistols, depending on the caliber. All right, but when it comes to rifles, it doesn't mean it doesn't make a difference. All right, you know, d d will a jacketed hollow point like a five five six jacketed hollow point, soft point, whatever it is, really make it make a big difference? Yeah, it'll make a little bit of a difference. But when you have a round going that fast in general, when it has that much foot pounds per impact when it hits. Yeah, you really don't need jacket at all point for like bigger calibers and stuff like that, or rifles and fat high speed stuff like that. Or like a 45, for example, is uh, 45 is kind of an iffy. 
All right, so 45, if you have like a plus P, it's a good way to go, all right? Now, sometimes it's a good way to go, but like ball ammunition is a better choice for 45 because jacketed hollow point doesn't expand all the time. You know, sometimes it's good ammunition expands, and a lot of times it's 45 because the speed of it, it's a heavy round. It's a big, heavy round that's moving faster, heavy round. But technically, it's slower than most calibers, but it's a big, it, it'll get the job done. Now, another thing that I've seen in the people that I've shot with, the people that I've trained and stuff like that over the years is this, is, you know, I, I used to do the same thing when I was young, when I was just getting out of the Marine Corps, I was young and I didn't know any better and stuff like that. I would carry a jacket at hollow point. I would, I'd carry a jacket at hollow point. However, the jacket at hollow point I was carrying, I had been carrying for the last like year to two years. That's I used to do that. Um, because jacket at hollow point is expensive. Okay, a jacket at hollow point is expensive. You can get, one box of say like Winchester white box, a hundred rounds Winchester white box, full metal jacket, for the price that you can get for like some at some in some places for a price you can get for a box of twenty five jacketed hollow point, same price for a hundred ball compared to twenty five of jacketed hollow point. So there's some people out there that are seriously on a budget and they cannot afford a jacketed hollow point. They just can't afford jacketed hollow point ammunition. And when they do, it's it, it, they, they carry the ammunition for years, and, and it's on their body all the time. They're sweating on it. It's raining on it. Um, they're cleaning their guns. They're unloading it, reloading it, unloading it, reloading it nonstop. It actually, that can actually mess up the actual round. It can actually push the round back in the actual jacket it, or into the jacket. And the problem with that is... If they ever have to defend themselves, they might get. They, they might just be fine. They might be fine. They, let's hope that. Hope one. I hope they never defend themselves. But at the same time, they could possibly have a hang fire or a squib load or a click instead of a bang, a misfire, because that ammunition has been corroded. It is not working anymore. So then, let me ask you: In that situation, is that two-year ammunition that you've been carrying for a couple two years on your body, maybe three years? I've seen people have five years of the same ammunition jacket at all point. They carry that for like five years, one, two, one, five years. We'll say that. Is that going to be more effective than ball ammunition that you buy daily? All right, which one do you think is going to work more more often? All right. So I just want to throw that one out there too. So I hear this, I, I do hear this a lot. People say this whole thing about uh, ammunition. You know, there's no perfect ammunition. There, There's no perfect ammunition. And a lot of people disagree with me, just like if there's perfect guns for every scenario, which isn't true. You need different guns for different situations. Well, like, it, ammunition, the, the ammo you carry depends on the situation that you're in. All right, that's one thing I want to throw out there. The ammunition you're carrying depends on the situation you're in. Now, if you're going to be in close quarters and stuff like that, yeah, I'd highly recommend Jack at Hellpoint. If you can't afford it, don't you then 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 don't get the jacket at all point now one rule that all these people forget to talk about is know your target and its background right the fifth safety rule know your target and its background so treat every gun as if it's loaded never point a gun at anything you do not intend to shoot keep your finger straight off the trigger until you're ready to shoot keep the gun on safe if it has safety until you're ready to shoot and know your target and its background a lot of people don't talk about that so if you have to discharge your firearm regardless of the ammunition you have to know what's behind it and make sure you have a clear backdrop right when well, i gotta throw that one in there real quick but anyway what i was talking about is when it comes down to these choices there's no one ammunition for every situation like for example is right now i'm carrying my 1911 all right i usually carry ball in my 1911 hardball in my 1911 ballistic wise i'm not going to get into the whole thing i like ball 45 it will get the job done and when it hits something it rotates most of the energy is released it has the penetration that you need to get into stuff Compared to the jacket at Hall Point in 45, sometimes they don't fully expand. Don't believe me, guys? Go watch Jell Paul Harrell. Great dude. Um, he talks about it. He has a lot of issues with 45. It doesn't fully expand sometimes when they're shooting. So, me, when I use my, my 45, I always use ball ammunition. All right, it's just what I've always used. 9mm jacket at Hall Point. 40 jacket at Hall Point. So, every other caliber uses a jacket at Hall Point. However... My 357 Magnum, all right? My 357 Magnum, I carry that a lot. It's summer, I carry that a lot. And actually, right now, I'm carrying my 1911. But anyway, my 357 Magnum, I carry that a lot, okay? And the reason I carry that is I'm fishing all the time, which, keep in mind, I got an awesome video coming up. I have my personal best fish. I'll do a video. All the people that follow me on Patreon, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. And on Facebook, you'll see my fish. But I don't know, I'll do a video on that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm proud about my fish. But anyway... When I'm out carrying my 357 Magnum, it is loaded with 158 grain semi-jacketed soft points, okay? It's loaded with a hunting round, okay, in a hunting round. And the reason I've loaded it with that is because when I'm carrying that, my biggest reason I'm carrying that is a bear issue, all right? So I want a round that has some expansion but has more penetration than standard 
and standard jacketed hollow points. So it's a hunting round. That's why I use that for that situation. Now I have seven rounds in the cylinder of the semi jacketed soft point, and then I usually have two speed loaders on me with lighter grain for, for uh, jacketed hollow point. That is a Hornady critical or a critical Hornady Hornady American Gunner. That is what I use for the two two extra cylinders, where the actual rounds are loaded in my gun gun are actually semi 158 grain semi jacketed soft point specifically because if i have to pull that there's a high probability it's going to be in bear issue all right well bears aren't really bad but anyway but it's a just in case so if i'm out there with my kids i want something that i can use against a bear but there's no perfect ammo choice for for every situation i mean overseas ball works great for pretty much every single application when you're in combat prepping good idea ball you need the hard barrier penetration you can get with full metal jacket if you're big into prepper stock up on ball ammunition not jacket hot point ball ammunition is cheaper more readily available and in a bad situation it'll punch through walls punch through all the other stuff for the preppers out there stock up on ball ammunition if you want to stock up on jacket hot point and you got the bank account for it absolutely go for it but you find yourself in a bad situation in a combat zone which will probably never happen in say in, in america hopefully it'll never happen then you're going to want something that'll be able to punch through stuff so stock up on ball whereas if you're specifically focused on home defense and stuff like that you're going to want jacketed hollow point now once again if you cannot afford jacketed hollow point by all means use ball ball ammunition works well it's been used in the military for hundreds of years now it works absolutely fine all right it works absolutely fine but once with every single gun, regardless of ammo choice, know your target and its background. But anyway, I'm gonna I could go on and on about this, and I'm just rambling on now, and I gotta get to work. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. Remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.